Let's say you're dreaming about a multi-hull, a boat that will take you and your family to far horizons. You have embarked on your search but are confused about multi-hulls that all look nearly the same and you have no clue what to look out for. Boat dealers, trade shows and test sales will only provide you with a very limited and often subjectively driven picture of what is on the market. So which features should you consider contemplating buying a catamaran or a trimaran? Hi, my name is Gregor Tarjan, founder and owner of Aero Yacht. In this episode 15 of our mini-series Catamarans Art and Science, I will highlight the most important safety and construction parameters you should consider. I always say there are three key components for a good multi experience. Good design, proper construction, and the right seamanship. We can only influence the latter, so you better make sure that a catamaran's design and her construction are optimal. We all know that boats are probably the best memory machine, but not a good financial investment. Anyone who tells you otherwise is not truthful. Yet you should still be careful and need to consider a yard's reputation, warranty, and after sale service. These are aspects of a purchase that few buyers think of. Don't expect the same kind of after sale service that you would get when buying a new car. Multi hull manufacturers still have a lot to learn. They mostly stand behind their product, but usually long warranty transaction times can annoy even the most patient customer. Certainly, make sure that who you're actually sending the money to has a flawless reputation and is financially sound. For those who know me, the aspect of safety is the most important consideration factor. In the last decades, multi hull buyers stopped wondering about capsize statistics, but surprisingly never ask, how are the keels attached and what is the actual core sandwich material? Stay away from multi hulls that have keels laminated to their hulls, because if you have an impact, you could be left with a gaping hole in your most vulnerable compartment. Rather make sure keels are simply siliconed without any laminate or screws. This way, in case of a collision, the keel will slide off and leave the hull intact. It will simply break away like a lizard's tail. Talking about safety and value, today 90% of boats, including most multi hulls, are built with wood core. Fontaine Pajot, Leopard, Moorings, Lagoon, Bali, you name them. They all build with balsa wood. Assure yourself that you are not buying a fiberglass boat that is actually built in wood. Most of modern multi hulls are fiberglass composites that encapsulate a huge wooden structure. I'm not saying that all balsa boats are bad, but I think there are better choices. And you as a buyer should be aware. The wood choice of large volume manufacturers is usually end grain balsa, which in a dry state has the same compression characteristics as foam, but when moist turns into absolute useless mush. Manufacturers will tell you that their wood composites are all high-tech infused, vacuum bagged and safe. But just think about it. Wood by nature's amazing design is engineered to soak up water. So is it not the very last thing that you want in your multi-hull? Especially in her hull and particularly under the waterline, balsa wood is not what you want. In my career, I've had a dozen of catastrophic osmosis related warranty issues involving wooden cores from major manufacturers. In fairness, I will not name them. These boats were only a couple of years old. Believe me, you don't want to be on the receiving end of this dismal situation. Seeing your boat decommissioned for a year and falling apart is not what you want. There are much better alternatives. Buy a boat that has a foam core. The Venice cell or core cell are the best core materials. So you will ask, why do actually builders still use wooden cores? The answer is because it's cheaper. Not by much, but when you multiply the savings by hundreds of units, then savings using balsa core versus foam can be in the millions of dollars for a builder. 
Low production multi-hull builders and high-end yacht manufacturers only use foam cores in the hulls and decks. They know why and this should tell us something. So big lesson here, only buy a multi-hull that has foam as her core material. These boats are not more expensive than their wooden counterparts, but minimize the risk of osmosis. Here at Aero Yacht, all our multi-hulls we sell are built with foam. We are official dealers for McConaughey boats, Sun Reef yachts, Neil Trimarans, and Nordetech Catamarans. All have foam core and don't use balsa wood. With my past experiences, I honestly could not sell a boat with a clear conscience that has a wooden core. Make sure that the multi-hull you're considering of buying has proper proportions, does not look like a brick in the water, and has plenty of bridge deck clearance. Bridge deck clearance is the distance from the bottom of the main deck to the water. The higher, the better. Most of today's multi-hulls look like wedding cakes and seem to emphasize space over wholesome design. Understandably, more volume is better for charters, but sailing offshore in fresh winds can become extremely traumatic on a boat with a low bridge deck. Waves will pound against the structure and potentially damage the multi-hull, so make sure you add a high bridge deck to your must-have list. After all, you are buying a boat and not a houseboat. Another word of warning, as attractive as forward-facing cockpits may be at anchor, they should be avoided on multi-hulls less than 55 feet. Their vulnerability offshore far outweigh the advantage in the harbor. Let's talk about interior considerations. You want to look at the obvious. Does the given accommodation plan work for your type of cruising? Don't buy a pre-owned X Charter Cat with four cabins and four heads just because the boat is cheap. Knowing you'll be spending a lot of time and money, get an owner's version, preferably with a suite in one of the hulls, if this is what you're after. Your enjoyment of the boat and resale value will be much higher. Understand the safety drawbacks and advantages of keels versus dagger boards, and know the many compromises that varying steering positions on a catamaran will provide you with. These are other very important design factors to consider. I've written several articles for Sail, Cruising World, multi hulls Quarterly, and Blue Water Sailing about these subjects, and some of these publications can be found on our Aero Yacht website as well as in my three catamaran books. Assuming you are looking for a well-balanced multi hull which will provide you with ample space, a decent performance, and a price that will fit within the norm of the competition. Whether you're looking for a mid 40 foot cruiser or a large super yacht catamaran, you need to decide which of the three parameters are most important to you. Speed, volume, and price. Remember, you can only have two of the three. Knowing what you can compromise on will greatly help sift out the right candidates. A really quick way to evaluate catamaran's speed potential is to look at the power to weight ratio or sail area displacement ratio. The more sail area and lighter the multi-hull, the faster she will be and the more fun you will have at the helm. Because of the extra speed you will be able to reduce exposure time at sea and you will also have more options in routing around bad weather. Be careful though, having a boat that is too light and too fast is also tiring on longer sails. Sure, you could reef and slow the boat down, but that somehow negates the boat's original design DNA and you are wasting either space or a high purchase price. So you really want a balanced boat that is in the upper third of the spectrum, which has a fair price, still has ample space, but does not look or perform like a houseboat. I hope that this episode offered some new insights and that you got some enjoyment of by watching. A lot more information and technical articles are on our aeroyacht.com website and in my books on catamarans. You can purchase them via Amazon and eBooks. 
If you want to follow more episodes of our 22-part mini-series as they become available, please make sure that you subscribe and like this channel so you do not miss any. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the water in a multi-hole.